All right, guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. This is Ali Plays, and today I'm going to be doing my Ice Golem 20 Definitive Auto Guide. So it's going to be one of my uh, better guides in this game. Yeah, it took me about like three days, uh, three to four days, uh, creating this guide because I didn't want to rush it. I wanted it to be very good. So yeah, I'm going to be run my Auto 20 team, Ice Golem 20, in the background. So what I am using, I'm using Martyr as lead for the 33% um, leader skill, the aura skill. 33% defense boost for everybody on all allies. It's a universal skill. I'm using Vrask. I'm using uh, Molly Tankard, Tomb Lord, and Man Eater. So my win rate with this composition right here is 100%. And my best clear time is 8 minutes and 19 seconds, uh, which is pretty long. But this is 100% win rate, so that is okay. And the only thing we want to do is get that uh, the 10 clears on stage 20. So it doesn't matter how long it takes as long as we get it done, right? So the important notes, uh, this guide assumes that you have characters maxed out in terms of masteries gear. So you want to give them plus 16 for the artifacts. This is end game, right? If you're doing trying to do uh, stage 20 of the ice golem, if you're on that mission, that's end game. So you should uh, be plus 16 on your gear. Some of them are okay, I guess. Like if you, let's say your, your helmet and your shield, uh, let's say it's like plus 14, that should be okay. So not, not to get very nitpicky, but it does actually help. And make sure you have good substats as well. And make sure your accessories are good as well. Uh, perch for the champion that you're using. So and the skills must be fully maxed out. But there are some exceptions on certain champions such as the Cult Brawler. So let's talk about the Ice Golem mechanics. His A1 is called Frost Nova. So it attacks all enemies. Just an AoE attack. His A2 ability is called Numbing Chill. He attacks all enemies. And then he places a 50% decrease accuracy debuff for 2 turns. So that is okay, but his passive is where the fight gets uh, pretty difficult. His passive is called Frigid Vengeance. So it's an AoE attack, area of effect, so it attacks all your allies, all, all the enemies, in his point of view. One time, whenever Klyce's HP drops below each threshold. So the thresholds are 80%, so when he reaches 80%, he's automatically going to do this AoE. 60%, 45%, 30%, and 15%. And the attack ignores 50% of the enemy defense for each ally alive. The attack also. So his allies are alive, those two guys on the side. So he's going to ignore 50% of your uh, defense per one that's alive. So it's going to be 100% of your defense. So he has potential to wipe out your whole team with his ability. And if he doesn't wipe it out, he has a he has a 20% 20, 20 chance of placing a freeze debuff as well with this ability. And then the chance of placing a freeze uh, increases by 40% for each of uh, his minions that are alive. So that can be 100% for both. So most of the time your team's gonna get wiped or they're gonna get frozen and fight's basically over from there. So that's the danger from the kit. Uh, so that's what makes him dangerous when his allies are alive. So you gotta make sure that you kill his allies, but that shouldn't be an issue uh, if you're following my puzzle. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna give you champions that can substitute uh, for each role, all the roles, and then you guys can fill in the puzzle. So the best way, ideally, the best way to beat Ice Golem should be and kill them with block revive. That would be ideal, so that will make the whole fight a cakewalk. It was actually difficult getting uh, strong champions with block revive. They have that ability, and the candidates, candidates will be discussed later. We'll talk about that. But if it's on auto, it's going to be very hard. To, it's going to be very hard to do that ability because they're going to use it. They're going to use that ability even if the if the minion has full HP, which is not going to kill them. So they might die from another of your champions. So there are some dangers before the boss as well. So we're on right now. We're on wave, wave 2 out of 3, so wave 1 and wave 2, these waves are a test to see if your team is worthy to clear the ice golem. If you're having trouble with the first two waves, you will not clear the level, as simple as that. So what you are going to need is survivability, so you will need durable champions with great utility. So the types of utility I'm talking about is healing, tanking, uh, provoke is always great. I, for me, I think provoke is, is almost mandatory. I mean, you can clear it without provoking uh, champions, but it's going to be very hard. So that will increase your chances of winning if you have a provoking champion. AoE damage dealers, uh, debuffers, and poisoners slash HP burners, and buffers. Almost everything in the kitchen sink. So let's discuss healers. So you can see I'm using Vrask. He's great because he heals whenever he attacks, as long as he crits. So he has a neutral affinity to the Ice Golem. So he doesn't have advantage or disadvantage. So um, that is okay. Uh, you can see here that my Tomb Lord died. That is where um, Molly comes in, so she's going to bring him back to life. He doesn't always die, that's the thing. She doesn't have to use cheers all the time, it's just RNG. So yeah, he's neutral advantage on this guy. 
at stage 20 and he synergizes very well with the counter attack champion so we have martyr here uh, you can also use you can also use valkyrie skull crusher so those are the counter attack champions so counter attack is not mandatory because it only, the bad thing about counter attack is that it pushes like if he aoe's he's gonna you're gonna be pushing that threshold faster so if he reaches that threshold he can actually wipe your team so it can actually be a bad thing uh for your team if you have a counter attack champion but the only reason why i'm doing it is because of brask and because martyr has a lot of uh, utility as well so brass is great because of the heals obviously and the synerg synergization with the counter attack champions so other healers we have uh let's pull up my list here so oh, i'm gonna post this on the screen so for the support we have apothecary so apothecary provides turn meter boost uh he, he provides turn meter and he's well as a speed buff and he also has a powerful heal but heal but it's on a single target uh which is not that good not as good as uh Varas because it heals everybody so just be aware the ice golems heal reduction debuff because if that is up then you can't heal anybody and we also have uh, pain keeper as a substitute she has an aoe heal on her a2 and she can also provide the team with cooldown reduction, uh, which is also good. And her basic attack is not that bad. It boosts her turn meter, so she can get another turn. And another champion is Sinesha. She's a great support for her ability not only heal, not only to heal, but also provide the team with area of effect damage, which will help a lot in this fight. And what's also great about her is that she can bypass the heal reduction because her heal equalizes all allies' HP. So I won't go over every healer, but those are the ones that come to mind, as well as uh, Steel Skull. Uh, we'll talk about Steel Skull later on uh, when we talk about the buffers and the uh, damage over time champions. Tanks with Provoke. So I truly believe that having a provoking tank is a game changer in this fight. Having two is even better but not necessary. So I'm using Molly Tank Art because she has one of, the, one of, if not the best provokes in the game. Which can last up to two turns. So this provokes works for the first two waves as well as the minions on the, on the final phase. She also boosts turn meter on her passive when hit as well as providing a revive when needed so you guys saw that my tomb lord uh came back to life because she brought him back but it's not needed as much with this setup so this is the one time where uh tomb lord got killed so martyr is my secondary tank but she is uh, prim primarily there for her utility of counter attack defense up and aoe decreased attack and she also has provoke obviously that's why i'm talking about the tanks with provoke so i realize these champions are really difficult to acquire so i will do my best to post some substitutions mostly aoe provoke substitutions so the first substitute we have is crimson helm she's an epic uh, dark elf champion she's my number one choice as a sub in this battle she has amazing utility her basic attack fits your needs for decreased attacker so she has decreased attack on her a1 her a2 is an aoe provoke although there's some rng evolved because it's a four times it hits four times at random uh, with the provoke she also places block damage on herself essentially taking zero damage in the process her a3 ability provides the much needed uh, defense up for all allies, so a 60% defense up, as well as placing revive on death, which can save you in a pinch. Her and Vassar are also solid choices for a lead, so they both have uh, a very good lead for dungeons. So both of them boost HP and defense by 33% respectively. I think Vras boosts defense and Crimson Helm boosts defense by 33%. Another choice is Seneschal. So although Seneschal is not as good as Crimson Helm, he's capable of placing a leech on the enemy, uh, which could help a little bit with healing as long as there's no heal reduction in your team. He provides a perfect veil, which can be used hopefully to protect a squishy ally. He is primarily there for his A3, which when maxed out places 100% provoke debuff on all enemies. He is a good choice for a secondary tank. He also places counter attack on himself, which when attacked will basically leech on every enemy that is provoked, so that is very good. But let's talk about Aether, or Otter, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. He's a barbarian. So he's not top tier, but he can be usable in this fight due to his provoke on A1 and A2. He is also capable of healing himself with his passive and place a counter on him. One rate will drop with him on the team, but should he should only be used if you do not have the others. Let's see what we got here. I'll get rid of this. So we're going to replay it again. Yeah, so Aether should only be used if you don't have anybody else. We have Towering Titan. He has a provoke on his A2 and he has some utility as well for this fight. Uh, War Chief, that's a legendary champion. He has provoke as well as reflect damage on his passive which can be useful in this fight. Angar, not much to say, he's legendary. His whole kit is based on Provoke. He just doesn't provide anything else. Um, I don't want to talk about a lot of legendaries, but uh, later on, I won't talk about legendaries as much. <laughs> Drexthar Blood Twin, he's amazing. He fills in the role of Provoker as well as HP Burner, but he is difficult to acquire. Rockbreaker is a good choice as well. I think he's an epic dwarf champion. 
He's defense based. He has an AOE provoke and continuously stacks defense. Uh, he's a sturdy little guy. So if you guys want to use him, you can. Even though win rate percentage might drop, but uh, you should be able to clear as long as you clear it. As long as you clear it ten times, that's all. It mean, that's all that matters. Now let's talk about some AOE damage dealers. So AOE damage dealers are great to have, but not as necessary as you might think. So depending on how fast you want to clear the dungeon. So I completed it without AOE damage dealers. If you do not consider Tomb Lords Poison as AOE damage and the occasional Martyr A3. Uh, if you would like AOE damage dealers, here are some recommendations. So obviously a big one is uh, Big Gun. Although difficult to obtain, he's great with his, ut with his ability to deal tons of damage while also being able to stun the enemy. He will most likely will die at the final stage <laughs> if you don't have a proper team built around him. Sinesha, not only an AOE damage dealer, but also a great healer that can bypass the heal reduction with equalization. So as you can see, Sinesha is a good choice. She fills in uh, a role as a support. She fills in the role as an AOE damage dealer as well. Tayrell. So Tayrell is an epic champion. You guys probably know him very well. He has He's able to AOE as well as apply decreased attack and decreased defense while also having a turn meter reduction. He's a great choice because he is also very tanky. So Tayrell fills in the role as a debuffer and as well as an AOE damage dealer. Infernal Baroness, so she has an AoE on basic attack, which heals the lowest HP ally when used. So that is good for as a support, and that's good for AoE damage. She's also capable of placing a decreased attack on all enemies as well as to give perfect veil to an ally. So she's also a, a debuffer. So she fills in a lot of roles. So the best champions to have are ones that can fill in a lot of roles. So we have support, provoke, debuffer slash damage over time, champions, buffers, and AoE damage. So that's five rolls right there. Uh, Nezana, she is great for her AoE on basic, which does not do much damage, but her ability to provide ally protection and AoE decreased attack is great. So again, she fills two rolls. Felhound, he has an AoE on his basic attack. He's also defense based, so he can deal a fair amount of damage. He can also place continuous heal and reflect damage on all allies and is capable of placing a block damage buff on an ally for one turn, which, we could, which could prove helpful in this fight. Also, he has a a mass speed down on all enemies with his basic attack. So, Falhound is a rare uh, void champion. So he might not be as easy to acquire, but you can also throw in throw in a stun set with him, uh, which will help you with the waves in the beginning. So let's talk about debuffers. So we're talking about debuffers as well as uh, poisoners slash HP burners. So these champions are great to help clear the first two waves, but they really shine when you reach the final stage. So the best debuffers are ones that are able to decrease attack all other stat reduction debuffs are just cherry on the cake. So decrease attack is the most important one for, as a debuff. Poison and HP burn are really great source of damage when you reach the final stage. If the golem reaches the specific thresholds through damage from a dot ability, so dot ability is HP burn and poison, the damage over time effects, it will not trigger his passive ability, so that's always very good. So I use Tomb Lord as my dot champion. He also brings turn meter reduction, decrease attack, decrease defense. Although he's not the greatest poison champion, he's a solid choice and he also has a, a neutral uh, affinity against this boss because they're both spirit. For other debuffers, you can use the champion I mentioned in the AoE damage dealer section. Most of them have decreased attack. So let's talk about substitutes for poison and HP burn. So we got a cult brawler. So cult brawler's very, very good. It's hard to get him past the first two waves, but once you reach the boss, uh, this guy can do some work. So this guy is amazing when he reaches the final stage. The tricky part is keeping him alive until then. If you follow my team composition, you should not have any problems keeping them alive unless uh, some bad RNG happens. And once he reaches the final stage, he will be placing poison on the boss like there is no tomorrow. He is also capable of applying block revive on the minions, although it is difficult to do on auto. He can also cleanse himself of debuffs and heal himself while doing so. If you have him, this battle will be much easier. So there are many legendaries that can play the role of damage over time, but we will just look at the epics. So we have Steel Skull. He's a great choice because he plays multiple roles in this dungeon. He can heal, cleanse, and apply poison. Overall, a great choice. Also, he can place defense up on your team, which is very good for this fight. Juliana, so she's not as good as a call brawler. Uh, she is capable of placing HP burn on the minions so that when they take a turn, the golem will also receive some damage. She also has poison on A2. She will have type advantage on stage 20. Kalia, let's talk about Kalia. So no. Quick note is that Otter and Kalia are an okay combo for this battle. They're actually very good combo. I don't know why I said okay. She's capable of healing Otter when he is on the same team. And she is great at placing HP burn. 
And let's talk about a rare champion. We got Kale. So what is it? He's a starter hero, so he's quite easy to obtain. And he will need to be built with a stun set so that he can hinder the enemies. And he is great for his uh, poisons on A3 and, and on his basic attack, even though it's a 2.5%. But that's okay. So he's not the type top choice, but he is serviceable. And let's talk about buffers. So buffers, I have many buffers on my team. But the main buff to look for is increased defense on allies by 60%. Block debuffs is also amazing in this fight, which is, but there's a lot. Of, it's very hard to get champions with with uh, block debuffs, and of course block damage and unkillable. Know that this battle is possible to complete without block debuffs, block damage and unkillable, but will not be 100% win rate. For the increased defense, I use Martyr and I also use Man Eater for his block debuffs and unkillable. I have beaten this dungeon on auto without Man Eater, but the win rate is not 100%, and there are many many substitute to use for the increased defense buff. So that's like a substitute that we have. So we have Jerig. Jerig is great for his decreased attack on basic. And he can also apply ally protection and defense up on all, ally, all allies. He also has a passive ability that plays a continuous heal on all allies that take 20% or more damage. Captain Tamilla. So she's a new one. She's a dark elf epic champion. She is a rather new champion with an amazing kit. She's capable of increased defense on all allies while also healing them by 15% of her max HP. So the keyword is here is her max HP, not their max HP. As a bonus, she can heal herself with continuous heal on her basic attack if she crits and can place ally protection on her A3. So she's very good for this fight. So again, I'm gonna have to mention Skull Crusher. So he's only viable for his counter attack and ally protection. So he doesn't provide increased defense or anything else beneficial to this dungeon. Counter attack is just a bonus in this battle and can actually hinder you if you don't have the proper team. Uh, and he is only great when running Vras on your team. So that's what I mean by proper team. Without any other utility, I would only take Skull Crusher if you don't have anybody else. And he also has type disadvantage in this battle. Uh, Light Sworn is good in this battle, mainly for his A2 and A3. He's capable of increasing all allies as defense on all allies as well as placing a revive on death buff. And his A2 is great for the extra decrease attack if your other champions do not land it. A uh, new champion we have is Musol Bruh. Mausoleum Mage. I want to say that's his name, Mausoleum Mage. His A2 and A3 are both amazing abilities. He can increase defense and place block debuffs on all allies while also increasing crit rate. So the crit rate one is just a bonus. His A3 provides a heal, removal of debuffs, and turn meter increasing. Overall, great new skin for Grow Grip. <laughs> Let's talk about Seducer as well. So he's primarily here for his increased defense and block debuffs on all allies in one ability. He's also capable of placing a decreased attack on all enemies and has a sleep debuff on his basic attack, which should not be doing much in this battle because you're going to be having uh, AOE damage dealers as well. So overall, he's a solid choice for his dungeon and he's easy to skill up. So these are just a few of the champions. Block revive on death champions. Oh, it's pretty good, eh? So let's go look at some champions that have it. So champion does have it is Armager. He's uh, easy to obtain, but I would not recommend using him in this dungeon. Uh, there are obviously some legendaries that have it. There's not too many champions that have it. Uh, let's go to this Discord server real quick. Uh, I'm I'm Duati. So he listed the, the champions that have block revive. So he talked about Conqueror. Yeah, his A3 ability has block revive. Phoenix has his block revive on his A1. Armager, he's not a good choice for this. Mortem Macabre, he's a legendary. He has on his A4. 10% chance to unlock A4. Blood Gorge, he's a legendary. He has on his A3. Foley. Uh, Foley is actually not really a good choice for this fight because he doesn't deal too much damage even if you build him as such. So chances are he's not going to be killing the the minions with his uh, A3 ability. Zavia has on her A3, Queen Eva has on her A2, Luria is a very good choice for this fight. She has on her A2, yeah she's a very solid choice for this fight. Uh, and you'd say Blood Twin is probably the best one for this ability, him and Occult Brawler. So a Neithway Blood Twin has it on his passive ability, so any skill kill. And a Call Brawler as well has it on his A2. The champions have two debuffs on him, but he's gonna be one placing it. And there might be some decrease attack on them. So yeah, solid choice. So again, if you want to decrease your time, Block Revive is very good, but it's also RNG dependent because um, they need to be the ones killing the killing the minions. So you can't have your other allies killing them. Yeah, that's it for the block revive. So as you can see, I did it without that. And let's take a quick look at this uh, this chart that I made. So these are the supports that I used, or the supports that I've listed here. So we have Rask, Apothecary, Painkeeper, Sinesha, Steel Skull. So the Provokers are right here. 
uh, Molly Tankard, Martyr, Crimson Helm, Sinestial, Otter. Uh, debuffers are right here. Tomb Lord, Tyrell, Cult Brawler, Steel Skull, Juliana, Infernal Baroness, Kalia, Kale and Seducer, buffers are right here. Jerig, Maneater, Captain Tamilla, Musoleum Mage, Steel Skull, Skull Crusher, Light Sworn, Seducer, AoE Damage, Big Gun, Tyrell, Sinesha, Infernal Baroness, Falhound, Kale, and Nizana. So that, that's it for the Ice Golem 20 auto guide. Uh, this should be working on other stages, obviously, because Ice Golem 20 is the hardest. So if you want to uh, get ready for this for the future, it can also help you in the present. So if whatever stage you're on Ice Golem, Ice Golem you can use um, these roles and you can fill them in with these champions if you have them. And hopefully you guys can clear Ice Golem 20. Uh, let me know down in the comment section if this guide has helped you. And I will also be doing one for Fire Knights 20 as well as Spiders 20. And if you guys want a Dragons 21, let me know as well. So this is an auto guide. So if you guys found this video helpful, make sure you guys drop a like. And if you guys are new to the channel and like to see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. And while you're at it, make sure you guys enable notifications so YouTube knows you want to stay up to date on all my latest content. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.